What's going on YouTube? A Delicious Mango here back with another YouTube video and we're here. We're reading the patch notes for Apex Legends Legacy, the new season. We're live on Twitch right now, so anyone that is in the chat, probably hard to read because of this black, uh, the white background here with white chat, but you may be able to see their chat a little bit. Say hi to YouTube everyone. So let's go ahead and get into it. We're going to skip the dev stream part. This is just taking a deep dive with the devs and letting them explain everything. We're going to go right to the juicy stuff which is down here. Apex Legends Legacy Arenas. This is a cool uh, this is a cool pose. I'm digging this. I like all this. The games are going underground with the introduction of a new permanent mode arenas. Fully reassembled and unimpressed with the glitz and glamour of the Apex games, former Apex Predator Ash is taking the competition back to its roots, a pure form of combat. Rules are simple. Three versus three. Eliminate your enemies to win the round. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. You win or you die. So this is a lot, kind of what we were talking about already. Really, really, really cool. So we're going to go ahead and look at some of the maps here. There's a lot of different maps. First one is Party Crasher. Short version, Mirage took the voyage on a joyride and it didn't go as planned. So it looks like we crash landed. This kind of, it says Oasis, but it doesn't really look like the Oasis buildings. This looks kind of different. But so you can see here we are, Party Crasher. One of the two custom arenas where you'll be able to show off your skills. This arena takes place in a ritzy downtown plaza where players can choose to engage on the Crash Mirage Voyage or the opulent two-story buildings that make up the downtown. Stay vigilant as this map hosts a variety of engagement distances, both close quarters and long distance. It kind of looks like it's going to be long distance up top and close quarters. Like you can see there's a little door down here, so there's like some underground areas. I'm sure Mirage Voyage is going to be pretty, uh, pretty close quarters. But these maps look really, really cool. So this is also, as you can see, this is not a symmetrical map. There are other maps, like Phase Runner. This map is completely symmetrical. That means if you put a line in the middle of it, it's exactly the same on one side as it is on the other. I actually really like that usually for uh, Halo games. Those, those were great maps, the always symmetrical maps. So I'm thankful that they did one of those. Phase Runner on Olympus is unique, but it wasn't the first of its kind. Phase Runner is the second of our custom arenas and our largest, so this is larger than Plaza. I actually did not know that. This map didn't look that big, so I'm kind of surprised it's the biggest one. You'll fight in a hidden experimental zone at the peak of a mountain where a prototype Phase Runner lays for use. This map gives you a lot of space to maneuver, so be sure to be on the lookout for those who prefer to be patient and take you out from afar. Sound tactics and clear communication are what you need to come out on top as you fight through the construction site or near the phase runner exit. So those phase runners over here on this side, there's actually two of them. It takes you from your spawn to the middle of the map. So it's not going to take you all the way to their spawn. It's going to take you to the middle of the map, which is pretty, pretty cool. I think this is going to be a really good map. Just based on looking at it and some of the trailers, I actually think this one is going to be my favorite. That's just without playing them at all. I think this one's going to be my favorite, but that's to be determined, isn't it? So then you guys see, we've already seen these in some of the trailers. We have Artillery, Gardens, and Thermal Station as maps taken from the three Battle Royale maps we have already. Kings Canyon, Olympus, and World's Edge. I'm actually surprised that for all the things in World's Edge, they chose Thermal Station. That surprises me. I guess I don't really know what they could have chosen. Um, but they haven't shown us any footage on here. And I'm sure there are some people on YouTube videos that have got Thermal Station footage. So I'll probably go and check that out, but I don't know how big it is. Like, maybe you just spawn on different sides of this direct area, but I feel like maybe if you spawn up on the cliffs, I don't know. It could be weird. We'll see. So Valkyrie, we've already seen the footage of Valkyrie. She looks amazing. I don't think she's going to be overpowered like a lot of people think she's going to be, but I think she's going to be really strong at low levels and still pretty good at high levels. So her passive, she feels like she has a billion passives. Use your jetpack to reposition or reach high places. You have limited fuel and cannot use weapons while flying. As soon as you use her passive, there's kind of like a dash. And it's not like an animation, but there's like a sudden burst of speed in the direction that you choose. The direction you're pointing with your controller or the key you're pressing on your keyboard. And then it kind of goes at like a sprint speed for the rest of the time. But there is a dash at the beginning. She can get really, really high up. Way, probably like twice as high as Horizon. So she can get really high, but it takes her a little bit of time to get up there. Her tactical is Missile Swarm, so fire a swarm of mini rockets that damage and disorient the enemy. They come out in like a rectangle shape uh, vertically, so like from your perspective, if you're flying, it'll be three across and four down, so make sure you know that when you're about to shoot some people. And then the ultimate is Skyward Dive. Take to the skies to reposition a long distance across the map. Your squad mates can join in. This is just your own balloon. You know, you get to do this uh, as... Uh, a, a, a kind of substitute for a balloon, and I think it goes even higher than most of the balloons on the map. Uh, she's a recon character, so she can scan survey beacons that reveal the next circle's location, and while she's skydiving, 
apparently she has like threat vision so like she can ping enemies like she'll see where enemies are when she's landing so you won't accidentally land on people that's pretty interesting or you'll purposely land on people the bow check bow this is probably the thing i'm most excited about right now uh <laughs> this bow can take any optic from zero to two by four so it can can't take any sniper optics but i'm really really excited to try this out Dead Eyes tempo looks really cool. That's the thing that allows you to shoot faster if you're at a certain tempo. Uh, so I don't think it's just spamming as fast as you can. I think you have to have a certain tempo and you can shoot the bow faster. And then there's Shatter Caps or Shatter Point, whatever those are called. Shatter Caps, here they are. Apparently, from people who have been playtesting, Shatter Caps aren't very good. So just telling you that now, we'll all have to try it for ourselves. But apparently, Shatter Caps aren't very good. It just does as much damage as the bow already. So basically, what you're doing is you're just giving yourself a wider range, but you're going to do less damage because this bow is splintered. So, I don't know. Probably wouldn't want to use that. And then Olympus, though, they're calling it the Lost Fleet update. That's kind of cool. I like that. You guys have been seeing some of the uh, the teasers already, but Bonsai and Orbital is getting a new visitor with the Icarus. I'm going to be landing at the Icarus so much. I'm so excited about it. It looks really, really, really cool. It's I think it's bigger than the carrier, they say. And there is going to be a uh, there's going to be a vault in the front. So if you land in here, there's going to be like these little red key cards. If you pick up that key card, you run to the bridge, and there's like a vault with really good loot, kind of World's Edge style. It's going to be very very interesting. And then starter kit and loot changes. This is a big deal. A lot of people did not know this was going to happen. You are now going to spawn with a white helmet, white armor, white knockdown shield, two cells, and two syringes, like we did in that locked and loaded playlist where you spawned in with a Mozambique and some stuff already. Only difference is you won't have a weapon, and there's no more white attachments at all. There is no more white uh, knockdown shields, no more white armors, no more white helmets. Uh, let me see here. There is, uh, so they've removed helmets. Somewhere I thought someone said that they're getting rid of the attachments, but it looks like they're not actually getting rid of the attachments, but let's see. Interesting. Okay. We've wanted to take it. Here's a dev note. We've wanted to take a crack at improving the loot game for a while with our design tool goals being to make picking up loot feel more impactful to the game and to thin out our loot a bit in general since we're always adding, adding new items to the pool. Recent locked and loaded takeover mode helped us field test some of the changes we're looking to make moving forward. So basically, uh, low tier loot is either out of the game entirely or uh, it might be out of the game soon emotes i'm so excited for emotes so there's going to be ground emotes now introducing emotes every legend will have one emote unlocked at launch and additional emotes can be obtained through apex packs or by crafting them equip your emotes to the emote wheel and flex away it's great fun to show off to your squad mates in the starting room of arenas and of course oh so you can show off to your squad mates in the starting room so like people can see your character that's actually kind of awesome Oh, Crypto plays games. This is a, this is actually going to be maybe one of the coolest parts. It's kind of hilarious. Dude, Crypto's a gamer. Oh, this one is probably going to be my favorite. Apparently, Watson can place Nessies on the map, and then they stay there for the rest of the map. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Yep, I'm getting this one. Easy. She goes golfing with Revenant's head? She goes golfing with Revenant's head? <laughs> They have the Loba and the Watson ones are the best. I dude, I love that. That's hilarious. Okay. Now, since emotes kick your camera back to a third person view, we know some folks are already thinking about corner peeking. Competitive, competitive integrity is still paramount, so enemies that your character shouldn't see in first person view will not be shown. So they're just not gonna show up at all. That's interesting. I could see some uh I could see some bugs potentially for that happening, but we don't know yet. So this looks really, really interesting. This video, okay, so this video shows the anti-peak feature working on the purple dummy behind the rock. Without it, Pathfinder would be able to use the third-person camera to gain knowledge that he shouldn't have. All emotes have anti-peak enabled, and there is no way to disable it. So, this is what they're talking about. In first-person mode, you can't see behind this rock. But if you choose to do an emote, and you, like, turned your camera, you could see. So, they've made it a way that you cannot see enemies. Now, hold on a second. Actually, hold on. Hold on. Look right here. Right when it goes back into the camera, you can see the dummy. Check it. So it looks like you kind of will be able to. But that looks awesome. I'm so excited. Wraith gets another legendary skin and a battle pass. No way. 
Oh, but heck yeah, I'm so excited to see the battle pass. When that video comes out, oh, you know I'm going to be looking at all of that stuff. I'm so excited for that. Legend updates. This is what matters probably more than anything else in the game. Low profile no longer exists. This trait has been removed from Wraith, Lifeline, and Watson. After our successful experiment with Wraith's hitboxes, we are now confident that we can solve balance issues between smaller and larger legends through changes to their kits and hitboxes. So yeah, you know what they did? They uh, they gave Watson low profile, never adjusted her, and took it off. So cool. Never needed it, but whatever. Um, Lifeline. This is the big one. Combat revive. No longer deploys a shield. Can now revive two players at the same time. Can now cancel active revives in progress to allow your teammate to defend themselves with their knockdown shield. Okay, so you can cancel a revive. Doc Drone. Heal rate increased from 5 HP per second to 8 HP per second. That's not as much as I thought it was going to be. Deployment time before healing begins uh, reduced by roughly 33%. So it's going to heal you sooner once you deploy it, and it'll heal you faster, but not even double. I, I thought it was going to be more than that. Care package. Apparently this is actually a big deal. Cooldown reduced from 6 minutes to 5 minutes. Now guarantees an upgrade if possible in three categories. Body shield, other equipment, helmet, backpack, knockdown shield, and weapon attachment. Based on your team's current gear when the package arrives. So that means if you're sitting there with a purple shield, purple mag on your gun this care package could drop you a gold shield or a gold it could, it could drop you a gold mag like that's actually kind of big that's kind of a big deal dev note is lifelines kit was not in a particularly healthy place the passive shield was extremely strong to the point of frustration while her tactical and ultimate seemed like they were becoming more and more obsolete this is true these changes are aimed to redistribute this big power differential between all of her abilities making doc and care package more powerful and effective while tampering while tamping down on the highly binary and situational combat revive I still think your revive is going to be good because it's still a hands-free revive. That's still really strong. And you just can't do it out in the open now, which is fine. No one else could do that. Octane. Stim cooldown between stims. <laughs> oh, wait. You can stim every second now? That's hilarious. But it costs 20 HP. So you can stim every second if you want to. Every single second. Oh, man. I love that. Um, increased bullet spread while in the air and shooting from the low launch pad trajectory. So basically, you're less accurate going through the air so that that's how they're nerfing the launch pad uh they're just gonna make it much more inaccurate i think that's smart make people land before they have to shoot that's a good idea so uh dev note octane continues to perform really well after the latest changes too well we still love the frequency of the jump pad but we'd like to make stim something octane thinks about doing at the right time instead of always slamming it by default well i'll probably still be slamming it let's be honest okay Loba, burglar's best friend, can now run and slide at full speed while aiming the bracelet, and while the bracelet is in the air, Loba will no longer be slowed after translocating. Huge for Loba players, myself included. This is absolutely enormous. Oh my goodness gracious. It doesn't say she can shoot. It does not say she can shoot. We'll find out. Uh, it says she can run and slide at full speed. It does not say she can shoot. So we'll see. I don't know if she can climb. I don't know what she can do, but that's a huge deal. You're no longer going to be a sitting duck while waiting for that. And then when you land, you won't have to do the Wakanda forever and then put your bracelet back on. You're just out there shooting again. I love that. That's such a big deal. Um, Black Market Boutique. Increased cooldown from 90 seconds to 120 seconds. That's not that big a deal. That's totally fine, honestly. That's huge for Loba. I can't wait to see how she plays. And I mean, we already get her to Masters every split. It might be even easier now. Horizon Gravity Lift. Reduced lift speed by 30%. I think this is really good. I think this is really, really good. Uh, she's so hard to shoot as she's going up and reduced side-to-side -side acceleration. Limited the time you can sit at the top of Gravity Lift to two seconds? I was not expecting that. So after two seconds at the top of the Gravity Lift, it's going to force you out. Wow, that's actually a big deal. That's a pretty big deal. Okay. Wow. So that that's a big nerf to her. She can no longer sit... The, the attack helicopter, horizon grav lift, and, <laughs> and spitfire combo is gone. Thank goodness. Horizon's abilities will now get zapped by Watson pylons. Good. They were supposed to the whole time. It was a bug why they didn't. That was dumb. Um, so thank goodness. Fuse now has two stacks of knuckle cluster and reduce the cooldown. This is really good for Fuse. More help is coming, but we want to be careful how we buff him so that he doesn't just become the legend that kills you with his abilities. Oh, you mean like Caustic? <laughs> like what he used to do? Smoke launcher, thicken Bangalore smoke. Okay, that was good. Um, they inadvertently thinned them out. That wasn't on purpose, so this is getting her back to her original visuals. Bloodhound no longer receives assists from Eye of the Allfather. Um, really, that's good because people were just using Bloodhound to get free ranked points. It's not, it's not good. That wasn't a good idea. 
And then Crypto's drone can now scan and open care packages. Oh, so he can open care packages? It's kind of cool. Uh, can no longer use his drone to hijack a respawn beacon that's already in use. Oh, I didn't even know you could do that. That's hilarious. Okay, weapon updates. Marksman weapon category. So now the G7, the bow check bow, the triple take, and the 3030 repeater are all part of the uh, ooh, supply drop rotation. I can't wait to see what that's going to be. Um, that's a big deal. Okay, so the G7 and the 3030 are currently in the assault rifle weapons category, but they're a bit strange. Yeah, they're, they are. They're, they're marksman rifles is what they are. Um, with the introduction of the bow check bow, it's a good time to introduce a new weapons category. Yada, yada, yada. Yep, pretty much. Uh, we're increasing the movement speed while aiming down sights for marksman weapons. They were at sniper speeds, and now they'll be between sniper and AR speeds. Okay, that's kind of nice. Because, like, these really aren't snipers, the repeater and the, uh, and the G7. So now you can move a little bit faster, so that's good. I like that. Um, additionally, we've done some targeted normalization of hip fire spread amounts. So all of these are probably going to have similar hip fire spreads now, which is good. Supply drop rotation. Peacekeeper is out, and triple take is in, as we saw. This season, we're taking, the we're taking the Peacekeeper out of the Supply Drop and putting the Triple Take in its place. Of course, with any Supply Drop change, these weapons will have their stats updated. See how each weapon changes below. Okay. Let's see here. Um, we're not showing. The Kraber will spawn less often in the early game and more often in the mid game to better accommodate its power. Okay. Interesting. That's kind of sad. I like the Kraber. All right. Fully kitted rotation. Yo, this is going to be sick. Look at this. Holy crap. I love this. The next fully kitted rotation is fully kitted bow, fully kitted wingman, fully kitted R9, hemlock, and sentinel. This is like my dream lineup right here. Oh my gosh, heck yeah. Okay, hop ups, shatter caps, fire select to toggle between standard mode and shatter mode. Okay, so it doesn't force you to have shatter mode. That's good. Um, it fires in a blast pattern. This hop up will be equivalent to the 3030 repeater, too. <laughs> Shotgun repeater. Dead Eyes Tempo, firing at the perfect moment, increases fire rate. I wonder if it's going to tell you what the perfect moment is. To make room, a hammer point and skull piercer hop-ups are being vaulted for now and won't be available. So, RIP the cool sounding uh, wingman. Assault Rifles, reducing the headshot multipliers for all assault rifles from 2.0 to 1.75. This was already the case for the Hemlock, so the affected guns, the R31 Flatline Havoc. So, R31's not going to do as much headshot damage. Obviously, you should still be aiming for it, but... Kind of a bummer for those. Peacekeeper comes with choke by default. Pellet damage reduced from 10 to 9. Rechamber time increased from 0.9 to 1.1. Reload times increased by 0.1 seconds and 0.1.5 seconds. Pellet spread increased in general and spread when charged increased for all levels. So quickly lose charge after leaving ADS. Okay, so since the Peacekeeper is coming out of the crate, we are bringing many of the stats back in line with their previous values. So this is just... This is the previous Peacekeeper, is all it is. This is the Peacekeeper from Season 4, or whenever the last time it was in here. Triple Take. As a crate weapon, it will come with a 9 ammo clip and 63 reserve ammo. Fire rate increased. Charge reduced time to 1 second. Retains charge briefly after leaving the ADS. Move speed, move, movement speed has been increased, and increased rate while airborne. Okay, so it's not going to be as accurate while airborne. Triple take's gonna be kind of nasty, guys. Ugh. Havoc increased recoil controllability early in the pattern. Havoc got a buff. Spitfire reduced recoil controllability. Okay, good. I mean, that's what it needs to be. Just make it, a give it a little more recoil, and that's fine. Uh, Thirty thirty repeater is getting a damage buff. Heck yes. Uh, just to legs though, and move speed's been increased. Uh, I like that. I'm good with that. Uh, G seven move speed increased and increased hip fire spread, so it's reduced accuracy. Uh, Longbow. Longbow got the increased headshot multiplier, and Wingman got the increased headshot multiplier because the Skull Piercer is out, so I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Mozambique. Uh, increased magazine capacity from 4 to 6 and moved the two lower pellets inward in the blast pattern. Basically, it's more accurate with more bullets. I am so into that. B2020. Uh, bullet damage from 15 to 18. Ooh. But lower the fire rate. So, more damage, not quite as fast. That's fine to me. Arc stars, aim and movement slow removed from the initial stick. Okay, so yeah, when you get stick, you got st when you got stuck, you were stunned. And then when it blew up, you were stunned again. So, got rid of that. Badges are now sorted by categories and be unfiltered by all or unlocked only. When looting death boxes, players can now see the health bars for everyone on the team. Well, that's nice. Challenges can now be favorited. Okay, that's cool. I'm into that. 
Um, let's see, ability description page. Players can now request better equipment by going into their inventory and pinging a piece of equipment. Uh, you get one free challenge reroll. You can reroll your challenge to get BR focused or arena focused challenges. Club invites. You can now include what you want to play when you send your club and clubmates a party invite. Okay, that's cool. Uh, ranked. Fixed edge cases where an abandon penalty would be incorrectly applied due to server errors. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, flight path adjustments. So now there's different flight paths, which is nice. Ring update. Ring for pre-ring... Oh, oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, wait. Okay, so all of the... Uh... Okay, cool. Basically, all of the rings are going to close faster now. So, the speed in which it closes is a little bit slower, but the time it takes for them to start closing is slower. Or sorry, is faster. So like less time between ring closings and more time in like while the ring is getting smaller. Uh, bug, fis bug fixes, Pathfinder UI, float in the sky, Pathfinder, um, slight wall bumps no longer inadvertently cancel race tactical, that's nice. Decoys no longer die after a tick of thermite damage. Octane, all this good stuff. Um, let's see. Fixed more areas where uh, where Loba's bracelet fails, and the red-handed skin on consoles will now properly animate. I didn't know it was never like that. Let's see. Everything else is just kind of the way it is. So that's it, everyone. Holy heck, a lot of crazy stuff here. Uh, this is going to be a great patch. I'm really, really, really excited for this patch. Um, starter kit loot changes might be one of my favorite things. We'll see. Uh, no more getting punched off drop, probably. And the bow check bow and Valkyrie. I mean, this is unbelievable. So, guys, this is a long video. If you watched all the way to the end, I do appreciate it. Make sure to leave a like and comment what you guys think down below. I mean, I think this season is going to be great. Let me know if you're excited for arenas or if you're excited for the BR. Personally, I'm just excited to finally get to Tuesday so we can start playing it. I appreciate all of you, and I'll see you in the next one. Later, skaters!